Hi everybody, welcome to Citizen Survival Plan, welcome back if you have been here before. In today's video, I want to talk about how to pick out a radio, like a UHF, VHF, general use radio. A handheld is what we're talking about today, we're not talking about digital modes like DMR or D-Star, any of that crazy stuff, just regular FM analog transmitting. Before you purchase the radio that is in your cart, or the one you've been looking at, or the one that your local ham recommended to you, does it connect to Chirp? The radio you're thinking about purchasing right now needs to connect to Chirp. Trust me on this, especially if you're new to radio, this is going to make your life a lot simpler. So before you do anything, download Chirp, go through the manufacturer, and see if your model is in Chirp. Now, why is this important? When you're programming a radio, and I wanna shove a lot of channels and repeaters and stuff into that radio that I can listen to, whether I have a license or not is irrelevant. I want to go inside of Chirp and do repeater searches. I have a video on how to use Chirp and how to access this stuff and how to do a search for you, GMRS or amateur, how to look at the bands and everything. I'll put that video up here. When you are purchasing a radio that doesn't connect with Chirp, they're going to make you use something else probably called CPS. Or it's going to have its own proprietary programming. Now, the problem with this is this doesn't have searches and the pre-programmed GMRS and the MERS channels where you can just pull it right from Chirp and just stick it right in those grids. So what you end up doing is spending countless hours typing each frequency and naming it and adding the offset and the duplex and, and all the tones and everything. So, so it just becomes a major pain in the butt. A lot of hams, like these older hams, are insistent that you use very expensive made radios. Uh, ICOM comes to mind when I hear these people talk about this. And ICOM really only has a radio or two that even connects with Chirp. A lot of their other stuff is like DMR and stuff, and that's not what we're talking about today. But they're very basic radios. They don't have a lot of features, and they're like single channel screens on them. And they're not even tri-band. They're typically dual-band. So are they a well-made radio? Yes, but the user experience on the other end when you have to program it isn't the best. That's just my opinion. I love Baofeng radios. They are the easiest to just pick up, plug right into my computer, and I can program them so easily. B-Tech is another brand, which is basically the same as Baofeng. They have a little bit better quality control, and they have an American-based sort of team here that can assist you with those radios. But again, with anything I'm saying, before you purchase a radio, just make sure it connects to Chirp. It's going to be a lot easier to deal with that radio. Now, if one of these old hams or something is telling you that they you have to buy some sort of American radio and, and, and tell them to program it, be like, all right, well, are you going to program it for me? And, that, and that's sort of my point. They will talk a lot about this, but they're not the one programming your radio for you. Make it easy on yourself. One other thing I'm going to tell you to do, and this is going to be a little bit controversial, is don't buy a GMRS radio. You're going to have a lot more flexibility when you buy a actual ham radio. A GMRS radio really is just a ham radio that is just safety bumper to only transmit on GMRS frequencies. Now, why do I care about this? Well, for prepping purposes, I even if I don't have my ham license, I'm going to want to be able to at least transmit on ham in an emergency. And I mean a real emergency, not like you're hiking and you lost your dog and you have a cell phone you can call, you know, anybody else or a friend or something, whatever. It's got to be a real emergency. Like life or death. If you ever had some sort of societal collapse or something, you want your radio to be able to access all of this. You don't want to be stuck just on GMRS. Another big reason I tell people to get a ham radio is there is five VHF license-free channels called MERS. 
And if you want to access those, if you buy a GMRS radio, you can't access MERS from a GMRS radio. Like I said, it only will transmit on GMRS frequencies. So you get five more channels on MERS with a ham radio. Now, I know, God, the people telling you that you can never transmit any license-free uh, services, GMRS on a ham radio. I have a ton of content. We'll put some videos up here where I talk about the legality of this and why it doesn't really matter. I don't want to get too far deep into it, but I don't care and most people don't care. The only people that care about these rules are the commenters on like Facebook and, and probably on this video. I'm sure I'm going to get a couple where they tell you, oh, it's absolutely illegal and the FCC is going to repel from the sky if you transmit GMRS or MERS from a ham radio. It doesn't really matter. That's my opinion. If you want to call a lawyer, go for it. Another big benefit to just picking an amateur or ham radio as your radio is the additional power. Now, this is going to be another thing where everyone is going to say, oh, the power doesn't matter. Uh, uh, somebody even went on to say that a Paw Patrol radio that transmits on GMRS frequency at like a half a watt will go just as far as like one of these radios behind me, like a ham with 10 watts. That is absolutely not true. And they are wrong. <laughs> and the added power does help you. Now, once you hit a mountain or something in your way, it's going to stop that signal. But as far as power, I want that power, especially for local, like if I'm in the woods or like in the city or something, that power is going to help you push and flood that signal through things better. And that's really where power comes into play. It's not about the furthest reaching. It's more about pushing your signal through dense environments. That is where the power helps you. I like the added power that a ham radio can give you. You can get these in 10 or sometimes I've even seen like 12 watt models. So my opinion, I like the extra power. Another thing you're going to want to look out for is I like the tri-band models. Again, this is just going to give you some extra repeaters you can put in there. The dual band are typically 2 meter and 70 centimeter. And then GMRS sort of sits right on top of the 70 centimeter band where ham is. And you're going to get the 1.25 meter band. It's just another extra set of repeaters and stations that you can program into your radio. So the more you can listen to, the better. Another couple features I like to see on radios, and typically this is really with Baofangs, is that voice scrambler. So the radios that I sell on my site that come pre-programmed for you if you don't want to mess with any of this, um, they have a voice scrambler inside of them. It will mask your voice and someone else with one of those radios also has to have their scrambler on for you to understand each other. If you wanted to briefly get on the radio and mask what you're saying, this voice scrambler can be very, very valuable. I like to see them with an FM radio. Um, not only do you want to listen to the repeaters around you, in an emergency, you're just going to want to be able to turn the FM radio. I feel like that just goes without saying. Um, I really like dual watch feature too, where I can have two channels on the screen. Let's say that I have like one repeater that I know that I'm waiting for to hear from somebody on. And then I have another one that I'm just monitoring. I can monitor two different repeaters and or frequencies you know, at the same time, listen to two things. This is another one that I have over time become less interested in um, because I have found out that like your typical cheap, even $20 Baofeng will withstand quite a bit of rain, but an IPX rating for waterproofing on the radio is an added benefit. Now, a lot of radios that are on my site and a lot of the Baofangs are just, just whatever cheap radio you have is going to be relatively waterproof. I have had my radios in the rain and stuff before, and they've never had an issue. And they, they still to this day work fine. So unless you're going to be submerging it, it doesn't really matter. But waterproofing, an actual IPX rating on these things is a good thing to look for. So to summarize, <laughs> I really like Baofang radios and BTEX, you know, as the snobby hams will call them ccrs or cheap chinese radios but they always come easy to program there is a lot of stories uh about hams where they insist on 
having these expensive radios. One guy I know in particular is insistent on only using like iCom and these super expensive radios. And it turns out none of his UHF VHF radios were actually programmed and none of them ever connected to any repeaters in our area. And I had programmed a Baofeng for him and gave it to him. He, I don't even know if he even likes it, but it's programmed and it works. And that is the point. So to recap, I really like Baofeng radios. They seem to always have the best user interface. That's why I use them and give them to people. They're nice and easy to use. The menus are simple and they connect to Chirp. Thanks for watching and sticking around. Watch me ramble about radios. For National Preparedness Month, we are going to give you 10% off of any pre-programmed radios that you order with code NPS10. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.